Okay, now we're recording. Yay. Hello, everybody. I am Joan Turner, and this is your co-host, Deborah Carpenter, and she's always so proud of me when I remember her name, because there was <laughs> a time when I didn't, right? And Imagine I that. was on Mega Carp Medicine, so I have an excuse. An excuse. Welcome to the Intuitive Body and Soul, and this uh, we have an awesome, awesome guest for you today. Her name is Amy Porcelli, and she is an artist, a musician, and her tagline for Art Song, which is her, her website, is a unique art enrichment community, and she empowers empowerment through creativity, which I think is absolutely awesome, right? And she does like individual art classes, group art classes, and specialty art programs, which is where I met her, okay? And she has uh, done events with uh, something called Friendly Expression Art Shows, Viability Harmony Art Exhibits, Painting the Faces on Alzheimer's, again, which is where I met her. But um, she's involved in all kinds of things. And, um, and she does this just once you meet her, she just has the spirit of giving. So everyone, help us to welcome Amy. And I am going to bring her into the room. Okay. Morning. Oh, that's me. We want her. I'm going to hang this. <laughs> okay. Welcome, okay. Amy. Welcome, welcome. It's nice well, to talk to you again. We were just talking a few minutes ago, so we're talking to you again. And I was telling people that your tagline is empowerment through creativity, which actually is you all the way through. So we want to, uh, to welcome you. And Ask you, ask you. Your website is Art Song. Art Songs. Tell me what it is. It is Art Song LLC, correct? Yes. And you're the creator of this. Yes. Yes. Okay. So thank tell you. people what that is. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, so happy welcome. to be here. My and pleasure. So, so happy to see you both. And um, yes, Art Song is a um, arts enrichment program. And it is mission is to empower others through creativity. Now, why is and, that important to you? Let me, I, I know I'm, I keep interrupting people all the time. It's like one of my things I have to work on. But why is it, why is it important to you to, to do the enrichment? Like, I think people who find their passion and then use that passion to make the world a better place like really, really special, special people. You're definitely one of those people. But where does that come from? Where does that desire to help people come from? Well, Art Song um, was founded in 2011, nice. and it comes from the core passion of love of art and music. But Beyond that, it comes from a real desire to want to share that with other people and to be in a mentor role where you're sharing that passion, but you're also providing tools okay. for others to enrich their lives, but also to enable them to be creative wherever they are, and there's whether they're at home, yeah. at work, if they're a student, um, whatever their condition or circumstance, Art song is about enabling that person to be creative where they are right now. Nice, nice. Yeah. I act actually am reading a book called Incognito, and it's by David Eagleman. He actually talks about the mechanical workings of the brain, and he says having a purpose is what keeps your brain healthy. So we think it's just like okay, you know, people, especially now with the pandemic, you know, they're inside, you know, they're dealing with isolation, all this good stuff. But he says is actually, you actually need it physically for your physical brain because it, you know, creates all these new synapses and all kinds of things. It's actually, you know, he cites a lot of things like going out in nature for 10 minutes a day, and blah, blah, blah. But arts and creativity was at the top of the list, which was amazing to me because, that's what we do. That's what we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Well, so, if we didn't have a purpose, we'd be bored. Well, not only would you be bored, you would be unhealthy. Well, as, yeah. As humans. You can have a reason to wake up every morning. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's empowering. So I know that you play piano. Do you also play guitar? 
I do. I play okay. guitar. And I didn't, I didn't start playing guitar till later on. I was very curious and I started uh, learning classical guitar uh, when I lived in Connecticut with a wonderful teacher. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot. I studied classical guitar for about four years. Um, and as a uh, little, little girl, I studied classical piano. I also had a wonderful teacher when I was young. Um, and she lived right across the street from uh, my family. Yeah. And my parents introduced us and I started taking lessons with her. She was very strict. She was um, a concert pianist when at the age of very, very young. And um, she really taught me to uh, value learning. And the same experience I had with art, I met a woman through my mom who was in her reading club and she introduced us and she was from Poland. She was a commissioned portrait artist. And we used to study at her house. I would go to her house once a week and we were in a large group to begin with and eventually dwindled down to just the two of us. And I had that one-on-one -on -one with her. Yeah. And she enriched my life. She instilled certain valuable tools and learning experiences that I didn't, wasn't aware of at the time, but that I valued in fact so much that recently I got a letter from her son. She's passed since then. She would be in her late nineties, but her son lives in Boston. And I shared some of the things that were happening in the fact that she was a big inspiration for me in my life. And I think that's also part of how art song came to be is that those experiences for me of someone else reaching out to provide those tools enriched my own life. And I drew towards art and music. And now that's starting to happen in my own life where I want to share that with others. Pay it forward, right? Yeah. And I see, I see the results of that. I see a lot of um, joy, enrichment, um, relationships, friendships. Um, and it's fun. And I love being a part of that. Yeah, Deb says it makes you just feel good inside. It which does. Is true. And it's uh, it's a wonderful thing to share. I teach art as well. And every time the students do something really cool, I know they're the ones that did it. But I'm like, yeah, you know, because you're part of that and it's exciting, you know. It is exciting. It is. And when they do something like they didn't think they could do, that's like, you know, they turn around and say, oh, that's because of you. You kind of know it's coming from them, but it's like, okay, I'll take that, you know, it's very cool. And it is, it's beautiful because it, uh, it comes from inside and it's an expression of them and their choices. And that's another thing that I have enjoyed working with the elderly community that you're enabling them to make their own choices as well as the uh, younger community, the youth and in inner city. Mm -hmm. um, they're given an opportunity to make choices of their own and they're creating beautiful artwork or music. And I would love to just bridge that for them to be the facilitator so that they can have that experience yeah. and then take it wherever they want to take it. Yeah. Um, it's very rewarding. A lot of people, especially, you know, young kids are growing up with issues. They're not able to articulate their feelings and right. art is one way for them to do that. You know, even really, really young, young kids, you know, they'll, they'll draw pictures and, you know, you'll see things or if they draw a lot of pictures, you start to see patterns in the pictures mm -hmm. if they have stuff going on, you know, that expressions, you, you know, expressions mm -hmm. and so on. So it gives them an opportunity to get their feelings out, I think. And I think the same thing with music, actually, mm -hmm. too. You may have to learn the basics, but then mm -hmm. if you start kind of creating and doing your own thing, it definitely comes out. I, I play ukulele, not anything, I'm not on any level even close to you. Oh, no. I'm like, I think you're that's like up amazing. in the sky that somewhere. Is, but I I, you know, I'll play a song and I think I'm doing a really good job. And then everyone will say, well, gee, you really made that your own. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh yeah, I meant to do it that way, you know? So I think, I think that's great. And um, I think, Learning an instrument at any um, point in your life where you're drawn to it um, is wonderful. And if you have someone to encourage you and to help you and to learn, yeah. um, it's, it's great because then that person takes it and it's meaningful to them. 
It, yes, and it becomes their own thing because they take it and they add their own uh, spin on it or their own personality in it. Take it further. Take it further. They make it their own. So the whole teaching thing. Now, even when I was young, like a young child, people would say to me, where do you want to be when you grow up? I'd say, a teacher, you know, but I never, you know, not ever in the normal way. For me, it was energy work, teaching meditation. I have a certification in hypnosis. I want to teach people how to, to do that. Same thing with art and like ukulele. I'd like to teach uh, senior citizens how to play the lute. You know what I mean? So it's the whole teaching thing. There's something there. Like a person who teaches, there's something inside of them. Because I have a cousin who has like, she plays piano. She's got like five state awards. She's amazing. So I'll say to her, why, I, you know, why are you not teaching? And she said, why do I have to teach everything that I know, Joan? And it was kind of like a, like a whoop in the face to me because I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Not everyone has that vibe, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. That the giving. That the gi giving. Well, even just, I mean, she does give. She gives in other ways. It's just not through teaching. Mm -hmm. So I think that that whole teaching thing is something special, a special quality that you possess, mm -hmm. which is nice. And you've done a lot of things, uh, individual art lessons, group art lessons, specialty art programs, which I was saying in the introduction is how I met you, because uh, and we were talking about that in our little free talk type thing. So I want to kind of go over that again, because I was teaching art at the um, Drake Council on Aging, and um, they, you know, Bethany, Bethany Loveless is the director there. And I have been a fan of hers, like from day one. She's an awesome, awesome person. And she said to me, Joan, she said, we would like to have an art program that works with uh, people who has Alzheimer's. And so she said, have you ever done anything like that before? I said, no, yeah. Well, would you take a course? And I was like, okay, you know. So that's how we ended up with putting, painting the faces on, Al on Alzheimer's. And I took, I took Amy's course. Ta -da! And Pat, by the way, Pat. Okay. And so the name, and the, on this it says, train the trainer class. So you had us, you, we were talking about uh, I have not worked with uh, Alzheimer's patients. I have a friend, but that's the, not the same as working. And so you kind of gave us an idea of like the behaviors and so on and so forth. And if we were teaching them some of the instances or things that we might encounter. And so the most, the most amazing part of that is after, afterwards, because it was like this all day class, after we had this role playing thing, and so I was the instructor now, and Amy was the Alzheimer's person. And I was like, oh, good, you know? So I'm talking to her, and I think I'm doing a really good job. She gets up off her seat and walks away. And I'm like, oh, oh my God, you know, is someone going to do that? And you're like, yep, you know, and how are you going to deal with that? And so I went over to her, and I said, oh, I said, you know, blah, blah, come over, and all this and that. So that was, that was an awesome, awesome experience for me. And as you said earlier, the center actually, that was the last day that the center was open before the pandemic and all the, all the craziness happened. So synchronicity that we got to meet each other because I would talk to you for like two hours after that. And we're like, oh yeah, we're going to connect here. I'm awesome. so glad we did. Yes, yes. So that program, that program, is that, has that been something that you've been doing right along? Did you develop that? How did that come about? That came about um, about five years ago. I was um, working with several different um, assisted living communities. And it came from a referral of a director in Westfield, Massachusetts. She asked me if I would be interested in facilitating Members in the Making for her staff. And I said I would be delighted to. And I prepared for that and read about Alzheimer's and how Alzheimer's could be bridged with making art and how that could be a benefit to the residents and the families. And I had no idea what was going to unfold 
About six months later, I facilitated the first Memories in the Making program. And there were about 20 people, different directors from different uh, facilities that participated. And it was the most rewarding experience. Um, it was very difficult, it was very challenging, but I learned so much and we all did. And every participant shared stories of what it's like to work with memory impaired residents or who are in different levels, stages of the disease. And in that, we all learn from each other's stories as well. So half of the class was designed to, um, at presentation, understanding the disease, the levels of the disease, what to look for. And the second half was how to use art as a way to communicate with all different levels of dementia and Alzheimer's. And in doing that, we did hands-on creative projects together with different materials, paper, paint, pencils, torn paper, um, and we talked about that as we did that. And it was very successful in that I got tremendous positive feedback from the director so much that I was invited to come back the following year and the next year and the next year. And then I heard from Bethany and she said, you know, I heard about what you're doing with uh, Memories in the Making. Would you be willing to come to the Drake at Center? And this was in March of this year. And I said, I'll be delighted to. And, um, and at this point, we had just introduced role playing, which would be like you had mentioned, half of the class would be divided into uh, instructors, facilitators, and the other half would assume the identity of a Alzheimer's resident in different stages. And that was the most impactful because really what? you actually got to okay. physically be in that role not only doing the artwork, but mentally you were there, you were present, you had no choice but to be actively present with everyone involved. And it was wonderful because everyone was in the same boat and struggling and being human and really engaged. And it made so many wonderful relationships. And that was how you and I met and, um, I'll never forget it because the day I arrived, they talked about closing the doors because of the pandemic. And we decided that we would follow through with the day and we did, and it was so beautiful. Really? Um, and so that's how Memories in the Making has developed. And it's um, been a wonderful experience. And what I've learned is that working with um, residents who are in assisted living, dementia, or memory care, or approaching um, memory care um, conditions is that the artwork is a way to build relationships and understand and to communicate without words through physical expression. Um, we, and by combining music at the facilitating, at the, at the day where the program occurs, mm -hmm. that sets the mood and the tone. But it's the artwork that allows the facilitator and the resident to communicate. There may be no words. And the thing that was most profound is that it wasn't the completed work of art that was most important. It was the process of creating. And as an artist, I find that fascinating because it's the physical mark. It's not the finished product that we're looking at establishing it's the that process was, that was the greatest amount of growth for me because as an art teacher i'm always looking for the end result you know does this look yes. good is this what the student was trying to accomplish and then you come along and say well that doesn't really matter the process is the goal not the not, not the end so it's the journey it's not the, the journey not the destination so yes it was that was the most learning and growth experience for me uh, that whole thing and you're right yeah. talking about it versus actually doing it was a there was a big difference there was a big yes difference. and that process is so tender in that yeah it eliminates fear mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when that fear is eliminated progress happens right. on any level i'm learning um when i'm teaching youth elderly the disabled brain injury 
it happens that it's all common language. And when the fear is eliminated and you're encouraged to create, you want to create. You want to, right. And I've had that in my own personal life where I didn't paint for years and had a, a, a wonderful teacher encourage me mm -hmm. and remove that fear element. And then I was able to begin to paint again, begin to draw and to enjoy it. And you know, when you told, you told me a little bit about, about that story in person, and I was like shocked, shocked. I mean, your pictures, your artwork is absolutely gorgeous. And we're going to, uh, uh, you sent some pictures and stuff. So we're actually going to show some of those during the show and stuff. And when you said to me, I went through a time where I didn't paint because I was, you know, I was like, ah, you know, your work is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It's a lot. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you welcome. very much. Totally. And I also got a, a uh, disc as a gift, a music <laughs> gift, and her, her voice is yeah. angelic. Absolutely. So multi-talented. And the fact that you want to share all of that talent is a remarkable thing. I also work with Alzheimer's patients on maybe probably a more physical level. Um, I'm a CNA. <sighs> And I know singing to them is so important because they can hear you. Um, and sometimes it will calm them down. So I really respect what you do for them. Um, the art is beautiful. And the Thank music. you. And the music, yes. Yeah. So do you ever use the musical part of your ability to work with um, uh, like memory you. impaired or Alzheimer's? Or is it just the art and you play music in the background? How does that work? Mostly it's been music in the background, um, but I have recently been invited to perform at some of the facilities, which I'm I like that. thinking about doing. Um, I've been asked. So if I've been asked, most likely I will follow through with I sharing that. that. I understand. Yeah. That. And, yeah. Um, they're interested so i you know i i can't say no so i i think the time will present itself but yes as far as art sessions when we meet we play um well the first thing i do is ask the residents what they would like to hear for example we've had i would like to hear some dolly parton i would like to hear some elvis i would like to hear some rock and roll i would like to hear some heavy rock and roll so I'd like to give the opportunity for residents to, to tell me what they'd like to listen to while we're creating art. And if they don't care, I'll put on classical music, something um, in the background that may encourage that atmosphere of just fun and uh, a little bit of creativity and some relaxation. And um, maybe Debussy or some classical piano or something like that. Nice. Um, I do think though performance, um, uh, the directors in Westfield have asked me on several occasions to perform. So I would like to prepare something for them, maybe a one hour concert where I would play both piano and um, guitar for them. And um, the um, I also teach classical piano and I have two young students um, at the moment, one in North Carolina and um, one in Massachusetts. And that's done remotely, so I'm really grateful. I was grateful. just going to ask you that. Do you do it remotely? You can see a piano behind you that most I do, I do. I see the piano done. right away. I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, this time has been um, a real time to uh, right. be creative yeah. in the mindset of with the limitations we all have physically, we can't see or touch one another um, and go out to see one another. But the um, Alzheimer's community was the first community to reach out and be courageous and ask for remote access to my program. Nice. And we did have two remote sessions, which were very successful. We did them via Zoom, we did watercolors and the staff on site were very helpful in facilitating while I was presenting. And it was very different, um, but it's possible. It so, is possible, you're right. I have done some um, private art lessons via Zoom and one for a, a student who's in her 80s. 
and her granddaughter would be there to help facilitate. So you're right, it can be done. It's a little bit more of a challenge and it's better than not doing it, but. It, you're right, it's yeah. better than not doing anything. Yeah, that's and right. um, my father's a licensed psychologist and um, he's been a real wonderful mentor for me and nice. he helped me in the beginning and he was one of my students and we, he loved it. He was like, this is fantastic. Right. And it was awkward and strange, but um, with the time that we've had, we've been able to work together. And, and I think it's just human nature. We want everything to be perfect right off, right out of the gate. And it wasn't, in fact, we, I failed miserably a few times on the sessions because the technology and not and just being awkward and mm -hmm. but we got there and um so it's part of the time growth. i've learned a yeah. lot about that it's part of the growth process i mean yeah. i've had a youtube channel for like a zillion years and i never used it for anything now it has tutorials on it and talks and our kids TV stuff because we used to shoot in studio and you know have all these bright lights in your face and the cameras and whatnot so it was easy to just kind of sit there and chit chat you know now you gotta set it up yourself it's gonna be edited it's gonna be this although I have to say we're spoiled we don't have to edit we have an awesome editor her name is Tara thank you Tara and um, that's great uh, yeah but you're absolutely right when we first started doing it I would be like okay, you know what, we have to cut this part out, or I said this, or I did that. It was very difficult, it was, and there were a lot of failures first. So even though we don't have it quite perfect, perfect, we have a lot of help, you know what I mean, trying yeah. to, to get it that way. So learning to do things remotely, you know, I uh, work with the Greater Haywell Art Society, and uh, because we haven't been able to do in-person demos, they're like, let's do them online everyone else does everything else online you know so um uh, so i was recording someone who was doing an art demo and when we actually put the art demo up on youtube you could hear my voice really loudly and not the, not the other person's voice because i'm it's right up against my mouth you know what i mean so you could hear the other person but you could hear me more. So now I'm like this, you know, talking and trying to, you know, get the person on there. But it's a it's definitely a learning experience. And me and Deb were talking about, you know, there's a lot of um, negative effects from the pandemic, but there are an equal number positive. of positive effects. Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as you haven't, you know, lost anyone or had that, you know, that kind of experience, is actually a great deal of positive experience that's coming from all this as well. You know, there's a lot of growth there. A lot of growth, a lot of growth yep. um, with the opportunity of time and uh, listening, I think trying to listen to really identify um, what it is that I wanna do and how I wanna do it. And I was happy that it came back to the initial goal, which was to share creativity and my passion for art and music with others and that will never change and I was kind of excited about that because it is it was a life journey um, decision yeah and that never changed it was just finding a new path to reach people without the opportunity to be face to face um, so we'll get there I know we will it yeah. just takes time it takes time, and um, as uh, I don't know, I don't, I'm not politically inclined at all. But I saw something from Vega that said now you can have 25 people inside, 50 people outside, and I actually went to a 40th anniversary party, and, we, and they called the police station first, and they said, yeah, you can have 50 people. And we were like, really? We can have 50 people? You know, things that you used to take for granted. You know, now you're like, wow, party. You know. So I think that, you know, we kind of maybe have, someone keeps talking about new normal and blah, 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 which I kind of hope doesn't happen. We're very social creatures. You know, we want to hug, we want to shake hands. 
We want to well, do all that. Not everybody's stuff. on a computer either. Right. Yeah. A lot that of older be. people are not comfortable with it, you know, technology, mm -hmm. technology and whatnot. <laughs> so I'm kind of hoping, you know, I mean, I know they're saying a new normal and whatnot, but I'm really kind of hoping that we get back to the personal stuff and hand on hand and being able to touch. And I think, you know, we're human. I think that's part of, I think, Ooh, yeah. I think we need that. I think yeah. we need it. So, you know, hopefully we find a safe way to do that because, you know, pe people are afraid, actually. It's just a fear thing. You know, we're afraid to get close. We're afraid to do this. So it's too bad. It's too bad. But again, I think there's a lot of opportunities here as well. You know, learning how to reach more people. We certainly reach more people now than we ever did before. So, you know, maybe there's a synchronicity that goes on here. You know, learn how to reach more people um, and, uh, and learn how to do things differently. And I think, like I said earlier, when you have a penchant for teaching, okay, I think the, that that's a, I think that's a special gift. I think you have a special gift. And like I said, the first time I met you, I was like, I knew that you and I were going to be friends because <laughs> you just exude awesomeness. There's oh. no other way to say it. So I just knew, I knew. So that's it. this is, it's been a good thing. So again, you have all these specialty programs. You've been at Advanced Friendly Expression Art Show, Viability how many art exhibits and uh, obviously painting the faces on Alzheimer's. So do you have things that you're hoping for or things that, these things that you do, do you come up with the ideas? Who helps you develop them? I come up with the ideas. Um, I'm one, one person operation. Yeah, so yeah. Um, I do, the planning and the the ideas kind of come to me in spurts, and then I try them and you meditate. You meditate. I would say I do practice yoga and I walk. Um, and in that time that I created a new habit, um, and in that time I create a space to allow ideas to come in and let them just kind of come in without putting them away, pushing them away. Nice. Um, and so that's been really helpful. I learned that a long time ago um, in yoga. And, and now I just try to make it a practice where yeah, you I draw. Muscle. It's like an art muscle, yeah. a meditation muscle. It's like an art muscle. The more you use it, the better it gets. It kind of goes on automatic after a while. Exactly. It's um, it's become a new ritual um, to draw and paint every day, to okay. walk every day, to eat better, to make better decisions, to make better choices. Um, those have all been really wonderful blessings of this time. Yeah. Um, Excellent. And all with the goal in mind is to bring that back to the program, to the students, so that I'm doing what I would want them to do, meaning how can you allow creativity or a creative process or painting or drawing um, benefit your life? And how can you make those decisions to provide that time for your life in those days that you have to do those things that you are love to do? because every day is so precious and you know it's going ticking 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 all the time yeah i and, get that um, lately i'm like oh my god yeah We're it's, the other side it's, of the it's challenging here. it's yeah. like oh there it is again there it is and, again that tick tock i now that raises a question for me um what about people who are working full-time jobs what about parents who have like three kids how do they make time to fit in the arts? How do they make time to fit in the music? Do you have any recommendations for people like that? Yes, and in the past I would have said, well, one thing I think is really important is to write things down so that once you physically write it down on paper, it's a reality. You can look at it. You can get it out of your head and down on paper and see it for what it is see the truth right in front of you. Oh my God, this is what I'm managing. Yeah. And when you look at what people are managing, it's 
it's overwhelming what people are doing. They're mom, they're working full time, they're taking right. care of five children, their wife, um, they're taking care of family members, they may have crisis. There's all these things happening and um, it's overwhelming. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think if yeah. you approach it with um, a purpose, my purpose and my goal is to do something creative today. Okay. If you nurture that and you provide a little bit of space for that to happen, could be 10 minutes, could be oh, you gotta a half hour. On the list. You gotta put it on the list of priorities. I have been getting the guidance, especially a lot lately, to write it down. Now I write down a lot of things, but yeah. um, you know, in my little appointment, I have to put practice. You know, I have to put art tutorial. I have to write everything down. But I never write in stuff like for myself like that. Like take ten minutes out to just to do this or that. So you're yeah. right. I think you're talking writing about prioritizing. Writing it down and prioritizing. And sometimes it can shift. Like the priorities can shift. Another thing that I'm realizing is that nothing is going to happen unless we take massive action. That's and a lot been of driven times, home to me very much these last few days. Nothing Big is going to happen Do unless it. we get that ball rolling. Right. And um, so I'm like, well, how the heck do we do that? How do we take massive action? Yeah, how do you do that, Amy? <laughs> it's, um, yeah. it's a shift. Every it's a shift. call a contractor because yeah. I'm having my art where we've done and stuff. So she's sitting amongst oh. books and art stuff all over the place. We just picked it's a little an inside niche. joke. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yes. It's, um, it's really hard. It's really hard, but, um, it's a, it's a ritual. It's a new behavior that you have to learn. Um, you have to do something. You have to literally get up and move it. You yeah. have to take action in order for to see results. And it's like, well, how can, how, how can you do that? If life's too crazy, but um, that's what's working is that writing it down, seeing it for what it is and Doing something doing about it, doing. doing something about yeah. it. And um, I've had some great teachers um, help me with that. Like, right. um, keep working at it. It's not going to happen right away, but um, be so, patient with ourselves. This is good. You're talking about motivation. I was just talking with a student today who said, oh, when we get back in class, I'm going to have to start from day one again. She said, I haven't been doing my artwork. And so I was like, well, I don't care what you do. Pick up a pencil, do a doodle, sketch, do this and that. How do you motivate people who are like, gee, I want to. I just haven't been able to get, get myself up to do it. How do you motivate people like that? I mean, I gave her a Joni lecture, but I'm not sure it worked, you know? <laughs> I think sometimes if we shift the outcome and show them that it's fun, it's not a project, it's not a process it's fun mm -hmm. um we change our approach um okay, so this a lot is of a student though who took in-person lessons and since we haven't been able to do that she just stopped so how do you you know how do you say well you know even though you're by yourself yeah i said to her, just pick up a pencil just sketch i don't care if you doodle you know draw your cup or whatever you know but how do you actually how do you make them want to, or should you even try and make them want to? Do you know what I mean? It's like, I, I sat there and I thought about yeah. that for a long time and I'm like, well, everyone's path is they different. They need a motivational tape or something. Yeah, they need some, what motivates them, you know? How do you get um, them back into the groove? I think, I think showing someone, I think we can't really make anyone do anything. Right. They really have to choose. Right. Um, to want to do something, mm -hmm. but sometimes motivating someone helps when we share the experience with them or we show them how it could be enjoyable. Um, there's something that prevents us from not doing something. It's either a thought or they're discouraged yeah. or fear and Sometimes we can't really figure that out, but if we 
encourage them and show them a way that it could be enjoyable or share that journey with them somehow if you do a project together. That's what I was um, just thinking. Sometimes there's another underlying reason why people don't want to do something. They're not motivated. Um, they agree. kind of give up. They don't yeah. have, they don't see the outcome. They just see it as a task. Well, I think you're right. I believe with this particular student, there is an underlying thing. She uh, lost some members of her family, not due to COVID, but other reasons. And so the last time I did see her in person, she's like, oh, everyone's leaving me, blah, blah, blah. I think there's a little bit of depression going on there, which makes me want to help even more. But it's like I get frustrated. But I think I will try reaching out and maybe do some online stuff. I think the sharing, I think you got a good, that was uh, kind of yeah. with me a little bit. Yeah, if you could, if you were able to communicate online and share mm -hmm. something together, a project or an yeah. experience together, mm -hmm. it changes, it, it doesn't become a task, it becomes an opportunity yeah. to do something fun. Dynamic changes the dynamic from a task oriented thing to a fun or I yeah, thank you so much. Tell your father yeah. you good job with you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. So I have to ask you now, um, you've done all this stuff, you've worked with all these people. Where do you go from here? What where do you see yourself in five years? What are you doing, darling? Oh boy. You know it's a great question. I um, I would like to continue to work with art song in empowering people through creativity, um, through art and music. Always, I will always do that. And I, I almost see it as um, a seminar where I can reach more people um, through art and music to encourage them to be creative in whatever role they are in. Um, locally, it's been primarily locally, but now because of the pandemic, yeah, I would like to reach them globally. It doesn't matter where they're sitting or where they're working or where they're operating, but having the opportunity to share um, my own experience, but also to encourage them to be creative um yeah, that it's worth experience. it yeah it's passion, passion. it yeah. um because i i think it has value i really do i think it brings art and music brings value to people's lives and their yeah, families any brain scientists who agree with you <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. it's fun i mean you you uh it brings so much meaning to me personally but also to others and even if i don't see them again yeah that they were able to create something original and learn an instrument or learn how to draw something or paint something um that's meaningful to them i want to be a part of that that yeah, certainly yeah. that brings so much meaning to my life personally but also seeing that happen that that's that's human development that's um I think a greatest contribution is mentoring others, no matter what age or circumstance. Um, I agree with that. The fastest know, way to growth is through service to others, always, always, yeah, always definitely. I think, I think that's very important. <laughs> yeah. Me too, me too. Do you ever, um, if a student comes to you and says, I want to water paint, do watercolors, but they really don't, you don't feel they have a penchant for it, do you ever suggest, uh, how do you help them find their medium? How do you help them find their, like I have students sometimes will say, well, I don't know what I want to do. I want to paint, but I just don't know what I want to do. So I start showing them pictures and landscapes and blah, blah, blah. How do you do that? How do you just, you know, I figure if they see something, it's going to trigger, uh, you know, a desire. Is that, what do you do when you have a student? Who I, I, what I like to do in, I thinking of something that happened recently is to ask the student what's meaningful to them and what they would like to just create and how that would look. Would it be more effective with a pencil 
with graphite or with watercolor or with acrylic or if they don't know like they have or if they don't know um try do you like sculpture do you like sculpture and i had a conversation with a young woman recently where she um was was feeling stuck and I would like to draw a portrait of my daughter, she said. I didn't even know she had a child. And I want to do it in graphite. And I said, that's awesome. I said, do you have a picture or something that in mind? And, and she goes, yeah, I do. I have a photograph. And she showed me the photograph. And I said, this would be awesome in graphite. And I said, it would be beautiful. And she's like, I've always wanted to try this in pencil, but I always got stuck. And I could relate to that in my own life, feeling that sense of, I don't know what to do next. What do I do? And um, in that case, I think it comes down to one is finding out what it is the student is interested in, passionate about, to them personally, as far not as to me, matter go. as far as subject right. matter and medium, right. okay. and offering them opportunities, different choices. Yeah. Would you like to try this? Would you like to try this? What colors do you like? Um, you know, some of them absolutely say, I absolutely hate watercolors because they, I can never master it, but I do like acrylic. I say, great, let's try acrylic. Mm -hmm. and I think what's most important is giving the student the space to grow, yeah. to, to grow in the giving them the opportunities to try different things that are interesting to them personally. Yeah, um, nice. And also in music, in piano, in teaching piano, um, I ask the students, um, do you like these chords? Do you like the way the chords sound in this key? That's do you like you minor? Think I asked that. Do well, you like D major? Honestly. Do you like major chords or minor chords? And my student says, well, I really like A major. I say, that's great. And I said, did you realize that you could write your own music? <laughs> and she looked at me like I had eight heads, and I love and it. And I said, "Yeah, she go goes, get you." Yeah. She goes, what, do you mean? what do you mean by that? Yeah. I said, "Well, yeah. How do you think Elton John started, or Billy Joel, or really, some of the artists that you listen yeah. to now, where they played certain chords that appealed to them? They heard the melody, and they wrote it down, or they liked it, and it stuck. And then they started writing their own music, and that's the process." So I like being able to provide them that opportunity to say, yeah, we can continue to study scales and developing the skills and how to read music, but also take the opportunity to be creative. Meaning, what the heck is interesting to you personally? Right. You may absolutely hate playing this song, but what song is it that you like? So I like being in the, op the op I like being in the framework of providing the opportunity for students to make those choices and to help them get there. Nice. Very nice, yeah. very nice. I I just, you know, especially when it comes to music, I uh, I actually did have a music, I didn't stop playing the piano until I was in my 30s. And um, at that point, I was convinced I was too old because that's when everyone kept telling me, are you too old, are you too old? And then I was at uh, the Burlington Mall many moons ago. It's been a while since I've been 30. But um, <laughs> they used to have this Wurlitzer piano place at the Burlington Mall, which is no longer there. But I, the guy who worked there, he didn't have any customers, so he was just sitting at the piano and he's playing. So I was just standing by the door listening and thinking, wow, that's really nice, blah, blah, blah. So like any good salesman, his little ear antenna perked up and he realized I was there, so he came running over. He goes, can I, can I you know, show you some pianos and stuff? I said, oh, I wish. I said, I... I don't play. And so he said to me, well, why don't you play? And I said, oh, I'm too old. So he said, well, he's, and this poor young man, I don't remember his name, but I remember what he looked like. And they say, you always remember the way someone makes you feel, right? Because he said to me, well, he says, you're relatively young. He said, but if you only live another 10 years and it took you five years to learn how to play the piano, you'd still have five years of piano playing that you really enjoy, right? And I'm like, oh my God, show me a piano, I'm ready, you know? So <laughs> then I ended up with a piano. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you love it? And I did, I did, I took lessons, but um, I, it was, I was working three jobs at the time, and I really felt like I was wasting the piano teacher's time and stuff. 
so eventually I stopped. So it's still a very elementary level. You know what I mean? I don't play well. So I told myself when I retire, I'm going to take piano lessons again, hint, hint. And do you teach, do you teach singing lessons? You have an amazing voice. Do you do voice lessons? I have, I have not ever taught voice lessons. I think you um, should look into it, woman. <laughs> 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 you know, it's funny because um, years ago, I yeah. I wasn't sure I wanted to, um, what I wanted to do. This was before I went back to graduate school. Yeah. And I went to Hart School of Music and um, inquired about their uh, music program. And they said, well, yeah, you can apply, but you're going to need to sing an aria. <laughs> and uh, I was I not like familiar <laughs> with arias, and uh, my mother um, is a was a professional singer, and um, I only learned by singing Lydia in my room. And yeah. I, ironically, I ended up going performing and doing music and um, singing. Tell, back but, for one second and tell people what an aria is. Well, an aria is a classically trained. Um, it's a vocal performance, almost like opera. Um, and you really, it's sometimes sung in a different language, like Latin or, yeah. and I had no training in and you academia. Were you were required to do that. And you I had no idea, that. no idea. So needless to say, I did never pursue, I did not pursue um, a music degree in um, voice. But I tell you what, I sing my heart out. <laughs> you certainly do. You certainly do. <laughs> so that just job. goes to show um, there's many no's, but there's many yeses. And yeah. there's many opportunities to enjoy your life mm -hmm. and go with the opportunities that present themselves. So I've had many opportunities to sing, and I've enjoyed every one of them. And um, I, you know, I'm so glad that I have, and you know, I, I'm glad. I wish maybe I could have studied music professionally, but you know what? It, it didn't happen, and it's okay. You know. I was gonna say it didn't stop you. It didn't stop you at all. That's for sure. No, it didn't. Um, and um, uh, just very grateful for the opportunities in music that I've had. Um, uh, the album. Uh, it'll be a year. It'll be a year, uh, last week, it was a year that I released um, my original album. And um, that experience was incredible. Uh, it was about three and a half years to create the album and write the album. I had wrote the lyrics years ago, but to I was produce just gonna it. Say, the different. lyrics are all yours, you wrote them. The, the lyrics yeah. to, um, were kind of hanging out for about 10 years, but to go into the studio, that was a real project. And yeah. I enjoyed every minute of it. Nice, nice. That's awesome. That's it was, awesome. It was a little, it was like having a baby, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have never had a baby. I do not know. Me that. either. I've never had a baby, but I tell you, it felt like labor. A painful, <laughs> like joyful uh, yeah. experience. Deb's had three of them. So it was painful, but joyful, uh, right? Yeah. That's, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it was a wonderful experience. It really was. And I, I have no regrets, no regrets. Can we do another one? We, can we expect another album? Um, I have, don't have any um, plans for a new album, but I would love to perform the album in the future. Nice. Um, I have um, looking into doing a live stream of the original album. Um, oh. So I'm working on that um, to, the reason I want to do the live stream of the album is to thank all the people that were involved in helping me create the album. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were some many people who contributed their time and efforts and the process for me to make that happen. So I wanted to do something live to thank them all. Thank you. Okay, so now I realize I'm putting you on the spot here, but you're such a giving person. Do you ever do like pro bono work or just because you want to type thing or um, part of what goes on? Or? So I could say, I realize I'm putting you on the spot, but you know, we could just- You mean, when you mean like volunteering or- Yeah, yeah. Yes. I bet, I would be very surprised if you said no. I you know what? visualize um, you going into a scene, you said- No, it's yeah, great. Playing um, your guitar, you know? I'll tell you what, honestly, um, 
these past months um, since the pandemic, I have um, not been able to work with my students face to face. Um, and I've recently discovered most of them uh, are looking forward to the program coming back. However, some of them have passed. Um, in the past three months, I volunteered for um, a youth um, residential program, nice. um, volunteer, yeah, and nice. provided um, remote services for them. And I also worked with a women's group in recovery. Nice. And um, the women's group was the most rewarding experience in my entire work experience ever in that I was not, I was working, but I wasn't working. I was planning and preparing and, and teaching and not being compensated at all. However, it was the most rich experience in my life because totally those the women- That was the compensation. We have, no. we have a saying that we've been tossing around lately. It says some people are so poor, all they have is money. You know, and it's like when you, you know, like you said, this time because of the pandemic and people, I think when things are at their worst, it brings out the best in people sometimes, you know, because it makes us want to reach out and help, especially women. We have that nurture type of women and recovery. What an yeah. awesome, um, awesome experience, experience for you. Um, they really yeah. need and, the um, yeah. that and that was a real opportunity. Out. And that's where you yeah. got a great deal of satisfaction. And like Deb says, that was that was how you got paid. And it was like I have done similar things, tutorials and so on and so forth. And people are like, well, you know, do you want no, no, just you know, let's just do this and see if we can help people, blah, blah, blah. And that's sometimes where you get the greatest reward. I mean, you definitely have to have a roof over your head, but mm -hmm. there are times when, you know, it's it's just uh, right. the your satisfaction and the satisfaction. Enough. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. absolutely. yeah, it's a wonderful way to learn. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Uh, the best way to learn, actually. <laughs> it really is. When you take out that the monetary factor, you do it from you know, the heart. And do it, yeah, you do it from mm -hmm. the heart. I, I think it makes, a, it makes a big difference. Like I said, I'm not discounting the monetary side of it because, you know, you do have to have a roof over your head as well. But, um, but working with the intuitive body and soul, we have come across so many people who just do things for wanting to help other people. The it's like, yeah, it's just an amazing, amazing thing. Okay, mm -hmm. so one, one last question before we let you go. What kind of impact do you want to have on the world? <gasps> mm. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh. That every day, um, every day is really a gift. And as human beings, I think we were created to give and to receive. And so what I would like to do is to continue to provide enrichment for others through art and music and let people, that is yeah. that is the thing i think that i am capable of doing and want to do and am willing to do and i just think that it's valuable and, and I, enriching to others absolutely and one of my what i want to impact the world with is bringing people like you and other people who do things from the heart and really for you know raising the vibration of our world and other people i want to bring people like you onto our set so people see that not only are there other people out there like that who care about them and are willing to extend themselves but that they can be that kind of person also you know, someone looks at you and says, oh my gosh, you know, yeah, I could do that. I have a certain talent or I have a certain gift. So when I think about, you know, how would, what kind of impact I would like to have on the world, that's what I think of. I think about, you know, meeting people like you and some of the awesome people that we've met and just kind of telling me a story and letting someone else say, 
okay, yeah, I could I could do something. I could do a little right. something. She's setting an example. Yes, setting yeah. an example. Sure. And it's an example with love and stuff. Yeah. So we thank you. Thank you for doing all the cool stuff that you're doing. Thank you and so much. You and I for... have to talk about my piano lessons and all that good <laughs> stuff at some point. <laughs> and I thank you. And I look forward to learning you how to play the ukulele. Ukulele, you'll love it. You'll love it. We have so much fun on those. I would love to oh. join you or just come hear you play. Good, you could for sure. If you can play a guitar, you could play a ukulele. That's oh. cute. And I've been looking forward to this for so long and I me thank too. you so much for reaching out to me and I'm so grateful that we met back in March me and too. you're a wonderful, wonderful woman and, and you as well. So nice to meet you again and, and see you and meet you. And I, um, I can't thank you enough for this time. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And we'll do it again. Let's do it again, please. Okay. okay. I look and forward maybe, to it. Next time, maybe next time we can actually get a live performance. What do you think? That'll be great. Does she have some artwork? Well, she did send some artwork and we have that. Our editor has that and then she's going to show it and mm. some of your music okay. and stuff. It'll be awesome. Thank great. you, my darling. And we will thank talk you so you much. Soon. Take care. Be well. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. Yes. Namaste. We'll see you, my darling. Thank you.